So we haven't gone into our animation yet. And in order to do that animation, we first need to get some data, which is the distance that the disk needs to drop down in pixels. So we invoke this function and we pass it the target post, which is the post that we're dropping on. And this is going to return an integer value to game.distanceDown. So we can go up to the get distance to drop down function, which is way up here. And this function takes the target post, as I mentioned. And we first declare a local variable, the disk on post is set to zero. So we first assume that there's no disk on the post. And then basically we loop, loop, we loop through the amount of disk that um, could possibly be on a post. And then we check um, if there's a number or not. So on our game.disk map, um, we're looping through all of them and we're checking if uh, one of those indexes in the array is a number. And if it's a number, then we know there's a disk there. So if we found a disk, then we increment disk on post by 20. And uh, it does that. It goes through um, all of the elements on that index, or sorry, all of the elements in the array and increments by 20 each time it finds a disk. And then we simply return this uh, integer um, back to the variable down here. So now we've got that um, distance in pixels as an integer, and we're storing that in game.distance to drop down. And what I'm doing after that is um, I want all of the posts that were set to droppable, I want to uh, make them not droppable. So we're basically just resetting that. And I tried to um, do it without this first and just you know declare all of the posts and then dot droppable destroy which removes their droppable functionality but it wouldn't let me do this um, because they weren't declared on droppable first I guess it's just a jQuery UI thing so basically I first made them droppable and right after that I made them uh, so they couldn't be dropped on and this basically returns them to how they were before they were made droppable which is you know they don't have uh, they don't have that functionality able to be dropped on. And so once we've removed all of those posts from being droppable, then we're starting our animation in the send to top of post function. And sending to the top of the post, we give it three parameters, which is um, the disk number, so the disk that we're dealing with right now, the post that it needs to be dropped on, and also the source post, the post that it came from. So let's go up to that function, send to top of post. And in this function, it takes those um, those three arguments like I mentioned. And the first thing we do is we use this jQuery selector here. So disk and then concatenate on the disk that we're um, dealing with right now. And then dot animate, which is um, part of jQuery. And we set the left property to uh, a function, invocation. And that is get left value for game, and that takes the current disk number and the target post. So we need to get this left value dynamically. So we can go up to this function, which is right up here, and this takes the current disk number and the post that's being dropped on. And the left value is being calculated like so. So post, and then uh, concatenating on the post we're dealing with, so maybe post 0, post 1 and we get its left position. And then what we do is we sub we subtract um, we subtract the width of the disk. Uh, basically we subtract half the width of the disk. So we can use Chrome here to show um, how that disk gets sent to the top. So um, when somebody drops the disk they could be dropping it anywhere on the post. Um, they could be on the right side of it, on the left side of it. So what we want to do is we want to animate it right to the very center. So no matter what post it is, um, the disk is going to be centered right in the middle. And no matter what disk is se selected, it's going to be exactly centered. And the way I did that is, um, first of all, we get the left value of the post. So if I inspect here, and we are going to get, um, we're going to get its left value. And what I do after that is, the first thing we do is we um, send the disk up to the left value of the post, so which would be something like this. And it's also at the top, so we could, we could send it up to the top there. Use Shift to speed that up. And we're getting the left value. So first it's being sent 
to have the same left value as the post. And then what we're doing is we're subtracting um, half the width of the disk. So this this first di this first disk is um, let's see how wide it is. It's 48 pixels wide, and or it's 50 pixels with the um, with the border on it. So here we're going to subtract um, 25. So that would be 92 and 87, I believe. And then we add on half the width of the pose. So if I add 10 here, now it's in the center. So we get the left value of the post, then half the width of um, the disk that we're dealing with, and then add 10, which is half the width of the post. And that will center those no matter what. So we can see that in the code here, um, post, and we get its left position, and then subtract half the width of the uh, disk. This outer width, it calculates the width plus any border. So this gets the true um, width of the element. And then um, we add on uh, half of the post width right here. So target post, outer width over two. And no matter what disk is being used, that will send it to the center of the post. So now we have the left value and we return that um, we can concatenate on px, return that in its string form. And so now we have the left value. The top is 50 pixels. Um, I wanted to use a bottom value here, but for some reason um, jQuery UI was forcing it to have a top property every time. So I ended up just using top, which is the same difference. Um, so this is the same no matter what, so it's hard coded in there. And then we have the speed here, 150. 150 milliseconds to go to the top and once this is done once this animation is finished we're running this callback function so that's the great thing about the animate method of jQuery and all the callback functions of jQuery UI which is whenever you finish an animation you can optionally run a callback function when it's completed so after it's finished sending it to the top we want to send it to the bottom so that's why we have this function right here send to the bottom of the post and that needs the current disk number and the target post. It doesn't need the left value anymore because it's just going straight down at this point. At this point, so we can go to that function right here, and um, it takes the disk number and target post and source post. And I think I didn't need this one, so we can we can remove that. And I think it will still work fine. And uh, disk, and then concatenate on the disk number, and then we're running the animate function. And the top value is going to be 230 minus game dot distance to drop down. And we calculated this before and looked at that before. And um, basically what this is going to do is the top 230 is going to be um, the very bottom here. okay? And then we're going to subtract like 20 or subtract 40 to move it up depending on how many disks there is. Okay, so here, this is going to be like 20 or 40 or 60, um, depending on how many disks there is, and then concatenating on PX. And then we have the speed right here, 300 milliseconds. And at the end of this, we are doing um, another ca callback function. And in this function, we're just resetting a bunch of things and getting it ready for the next move. So we um, update the grids, and this is going to, um, basically what's going to happen here is um, it's going to, clear the grid and it's going to um, update all the positions where the um, where the disks are now and then we're going to clear the draggable grid and reset the draggable grid to which ones can be dragged so resetting where the disks are resetting the ones um, that can now be dragged and droppable posts and the post selector are being reset here then we update the draggables and we can take a look at this function. Inside the update draggables function, basically what it's doing is it's looking at the new updated grid of uh, where all of the disks are. And it's also looking at the one at the other array, which is um, which ones can be dragged now. And, um, and then it's attaching on the draggable functionality from jQuery UI. So loop through all of the columns and then loop through all of the disks on each column. And if uh, draggable grid ij is equal to one, which means um, which means 
the you know we already know a disk is here because draggable grid checks if there's a disk there and if it's the top one then it sets it's then it sets it to one so if it's um, a one on the draggable grid then we're going to do disk game dot disk map ij and draggable disabled is set to false so it is able to be moved here and if it's not found on the draggable grid then we're setting disabled to true which is they can't move it and the last thing is doing set draggables so set set draggables is going back to um, our function at the bottom here and um, doing this other stuff containment document revert and also um, the main part of this function um, set draggables is um, you know it, it provides this what happens the start option and then once it started, then we invoke the um, droppable posts, uh, which one, which post it can be dropped on. And when it, get, when it gets to that, what happens when we're over a post? What happens when we leave a post? What happens when we drop on a post? And it goes like that. 